What is up everybody? It's Justin here at SNK Greenhouse and today we're talking about my <laughs> We're talking about my top five shrubs for shade. Now, a lot of us have those shady areas in our yard where it's really tough to find shrubs that's gonna do well there. Well, good news. I have five foundational shrubs that is gonna thrive in part shade or shade. So to get things started, I have with me right here a shrub called Elysium. Some of you guys know it as anise, and there are many varieties of anise, but this one in particular is called Florida Sunshine. Features bright, golden, rubbery, kind of glossy leaves. It's gonna turn more of a hot yellow going into fall and will absolutely glow all wintertime because it is an evergreen. It's fragrant, mm -mm -mm, got a sweet smell, this shrub's gonna grow about five feet tall and get about three feet wide. This shrub in particular has many different uses. It can be used as a hedge. You can use it in borders. You could use it as an accent plant, grow it in containers. I've even, some pe I've even seen some people use it in cut flower arrangements where you just snip off about a foot down, stick it in with some flowers and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Next up on the list, we have Cephalotaxus herringtonia or a more common name is a Japanese plum yew. There are lots of varieties of yew. They're all evergreen, they're all for shade. This particular one is called Duke Gardens because it was developed here in North Carolina at Duke University. Now it features dark green needles. They're kind of glossy, they look very unique. And as the new growth develops, there, it's a light green, a lighter colored green, so it's like a two-tone contrast. This looks really stunning in a landscape. I really like this Duke Gardens variety because it stays nice and compact. It grows very, very dense. And this is gonna be a, for a lot of people. It grows through zones six through nine, so it can take our hot, humid weather here in the south, but it's also gonna take some freezing cold weather as well. This plant has many different uses. You can grow it in containers because it has shallow roots. And if it gets too unruly, you can definitely prune it, responds great to that. But I also see this as a really great foundational shrub that you could plant around the house maybe, uh, use it as a low growing hedge, or just use it as an accent plant. You really gotta like this shrub. I love this neck shrub so much, I wish I could shout it from the rooftop. I love this shrub! This plant here, Sambuncus, hang on. This is Sambuncus racemosa. Or we can just go with the common name as elderberry. And this particular variety is from Proven Winners and it's called Lemony Lace. This shrub has won many, many awards and it definitely deserves a spot in your landscape. Now, a lot of people mistake this for a Japanese maple and that's because it boasts beautiful lacy foliage. It looks sort of like a crimson queen or a red dragon, but these are definitely more affordable than a Japanese maple. In fact, if you find these at your local garden center, I guarantee you they're gonna be a fraction of the cost. This is a deciduous type of shrub, so it's gonna lose its leaves, but three seasons of the year, it's gonna keep this beautiful gold foliage. It's gonna grow up about four feet tall, four feet wide, but don't worry, if it gets out of hand, you can easily prune it back and it's not gonna hurt a thing. There are many different applications for this plant. I've seen them in containers in conjunction with a lot of different annuals. That looks really good. I think this could be a specimen plant all on its own. I think it's robust enough. Or if you wanted to use this uh, just as an accent plant to help highlight another plant, that would be a great use as well. Up next, we have Prunus laroceracis or we're just gonna call it Otto Lucan Laurel. That's its common name. And boy, is there a lot to love about this shrub. It features glossy green foliage. Um, it's an evergreen. You're gonna have these white blooms in the springtime. Even though it's summer, you're still gonna get some scattered blooms. But you know what I really love about Otto Lucan Laurel? It grows really wide but it doesn't get that tall. So if you're planting it around the house, it's not gonna overtake a window. And since it gets so wide, you're not gonna to have to use a whole lot of them. 
Autoleukin laurels have many different uses. You could use them in mass plantings where you're planting a lot of them to really make an impact. They make a really great hedge because they respond so well to pruning. You could plant them in a woodland garden, an urban garden. And you know something else I think would look really good with it? Going back to our Florida Sunshine Elysium or even the elderberry, something that's gold or yellow uh, really contrasts well with the dark green glossy foliage of the Autoleukin laurel. And last but definitely not least, who could forget about hydrangeas? This is my favorite hydrangea. This one's called Rhythmic Blue. And of course, like most macrophylla hydrangeas, you can change it to pink if you want to uh, just sweeten your soil, maybe use some limestone there. Uh, we naturally have acidic soil here in the south, so more than likely this is going to come out blue. But guess what? This is a reblooming type hydrangea. So if you're buying hydrangeas these days, make sure to get the reblooming ones. That way, if you shear them back in the wintertime, they're gonna bloom back on the new growth, or if you neglect it, don't shear it back, it's gonna also bloom on the old growth. This is a very durable hydrangea. The Rhythmic Blue was actually developed in Michigan of all places, so it can take really, really harsh cold conditions, as well as humid, hot conditions like we have here in the south. This is a very compact hydrangea. It's only going to get three or four feet tall, so it's not going to be, you don't need a very little, 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 little. This is a very compact hydrangea. It's only going to get three or four foot tall, so it doesn't need a lot of space in the landscape. You can even grow this thing in a container. If nothing else, grow this hydrangea for its cut flowers. They look really pretty in a vase. Even the dried ones that you can cut off late in the fall going into winter look stunning in arrangements. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let us know by hitting that like button. Comment down below what you'd like to see a video on next. Until next time, become a plant person.